Mama, I have a question. Why don't people like the irrational numbers? Hmm, do you feel the same about them, 37? Maybe a little? You see, Mama, I can count to three and to seventeen, but I can never count to something like zero point zero one zero zero one zero 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 one zero 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 one, let alone use it in calculations. Endless, non-repeating decimals would make a mess of the results, and I can't keep the equations as simple and elegant as I want. But your favorite, the circle. The ratio of its circumference to diameter is also an irrational number, is it not? Pi is special. I know how it was found and what it represents, so I trust it and use it in my calculations. The same with E, logarithm 2, and root 2. But not many irrational numbers of this convenient to work with. Some have no patterns, no simplest forms, and no end. I can't work out the digits, write them out, or calculate them. Not only are they impossible to pinpoint on the number axis, but there's an infinite amount of these irrational numbers. <laughs> What's so funny, Mama? You're a clever, silly goose, my dear. You don't dislike them. You just don't understand them enough. friend root 2, for instance. The irrationality of this number can be proven through basic arithmetic, as it cannot be expressed as an irreducible fraction of integers A over B. A simple proof by contradiction is enough, with no knowledge of irrational numbers required. The presence of root 2 is prevalent in nature, and it is particularly noticeable along the diagonals of a square. This means... Oh, I know! This means the system built solely on the ratio of integers was flawed. Yes, root 2 is simple, elegant, and one of the greatest discoveries in mathematics. It showed the existence of infinite, incommensurable numbers, with root 2 being the most obvious one to find. This was how the tower of old ideas crumbled, paving the way for revolutionary breakthroughs that catapulted mathematical analysis into uncharted frontiers. We discovered a kingdom beyond our traditional methods, one that's immeasurable, incommensurable, and inexhaustible. And the key to its gates is hidden in plain sight, in the diagonal of a square. A kingdom of... rationality? I see now, Mama. We are not all-knowing beings. There will always be numbers beyond our awareness, such as the nature of irrational numbers. So, if we get to know the irrational numbers better, we can be friends with them too. But, you haven't told me why people on the island hate them.
Mama? <gasps> Thirty seven. You're awake. Sophia? How long was I out? You've been in a coma for a week. We... No, stop! You're not well yet! There's no time! I have to find six! I have to tell them now! Our circle... has been broken. Now we've learned some manners in a payron, haven't we? Namely, to abstain from beans, never parcel off a loaf, and stay away from the white roosters on the road. Oh, it's been so long since we last talked about these things. How time does fly. This rusty brain of mine is struggling to keep up. Hmm. We should have waited until dawn to light the candles. The sun would have mistaken the day for night and delayed its appearance in the morning. That way we would have had more time to talk. Indeed. You possess a far greater understanding of the laws of nature than your ancestors. It's only natural that you wouldn't relate candlelight to sunrise. But for the people of earlier times? There was a commonly understood connection between the two. Did the trees not bear fruit after the Horn of Plenty was filled at the Harvest Festival? Did the field not wave with grain? Does the lighting of a match not illuminate the moon? It's human nature to try to understand the world. Of course, at that time, mistakes were made, and some phenomena were attributed to the wrong causes. Some theories were developed from false facts. It was a time of symbols, you see. The flower represented blessings and harvest. The Ouroboros, the eternal cycle. The hawk, wit and astuteness, and the soil, safety and protection. Aside from nature, the circle symbolized protection, the triangle, stability, and the triple helix, ascendance, change, and the unity of mind, body, and soul. As time went on, things became associated with one another, and more and more symbols were created. Ah, you can see the cause and effect with your own eyes, dear. It's clear when something is related and when it isn't. If the outcome isn't what we expect, these symbols must be incorrect. But it's not their physical form that's wrong. Physical objects never lie. 
It's the meaning and concept given to them that are wrong, you see. Objects are just objects. A match is just a match, not the illuminator of the moon. An animal is just an animal. A circle and triangle are only shapes. And you are just you. Nothing's happening. Miss Virgin, your attention, please. This is a public inquiry, and your answer determines the fate of you and your friends. There will be a vote on your punishment considering the leak of the island's coordinates and the damages caused by you and Manus Vindicte. Yet, in the past two hours, you've looked at your watch ten times. Forgive me for being blunt, what could possibly bother you more than your sentence? My apologies. Let her look, 888. Doesn't it occur to you that time is also in the form of numbers? Perhaps she's waiting for her lucky number to come. <laughs> Besides, what conclusions have the good people here made? We were brought together in this great hall today, for misfortunes have struck us in the past week. Manus followers were found dead in our sacred place, the Gorgon current was cut off, and a human army has invaded our land. There are also the territorial disputes, the threats from external powers, and the conflicts between our guests. As you can see, our guests have brought us quite the unexpected gifts. They will give us their explanations. But whose words should we trust? Those of the Foundation or Manus Vindicte? I swear on the Stone of Truth that I have no knowledge of the leak. We never gave any information to the humans. As we speak, the St. Pavlov Foundation is taking measures to mediate the territorial disputes from outside the island. But you did report everything here to the Foundation. And you don't know what they did with the information, do you? Right. A questionable defense. A doubtful explanation. Why should we trust her? We all know that the Foundation is closely associated with the humans. They are the false friends of the Arcanists, with their crocodile tears and broken vows. While many may have changed over time, their nefarious human taint lingers. Besides, why should we seek collaboration and assistance from an organization that's seven years behind us on the study of the Emanation? But rush not, brothers and sisters. The moment of decision has not yet arrived. Let's give our old friend Manus Vindicte a fair and equal hearing before casting our pebbles into the pot.
Indeed. The Foundation's understanding of the emanation is seven years behind ours. However, our Manus friends here are unable to speak at all, let alone understand complex mathematical principles. Please enlighten us, Miss Arcana. Why were swaths of your followers found dead at the door of our sacred place? Did our math lessons drive them to madness, causing them to bash their heads against the gates of truth like martyrs? So it would seem. What? confess that our followers were ill-prepared to take on the wisdom of the island. But we did come seek mutual development with sincerity. I trust you are aware of the assistance we have provided over the years in this world of matters which you, though reluctantly, relied upon. As to this debate, I was once told a story that now seems fitting to recount. Pray, share with us. Thank you kindly. Tis the story of the circle. A young artist told it to me before I arrived on this island. In the ancient past, amid a world of primitive instincts and ignorance, the first intelligent mind awakened. Overwhelmed by the enormity of nature and dismayed by its own insignificance, the creature was shaken to its core. In an act of defiance, it drew a magic circle, shielding its powerless self from the formidable world beyond. This was the first magic when the primitive man mastered the Numa within and wielded it against the relentless forces of nature. In that process, man hath gained a deeper understanding of the boundaries and limitations of its power. This is the tale of the First Circle. The circle shielded us, and its protection benefits thee to this day. What I find intriguing in this story... Man hath established its existence, recognized its boundaries, and learned the purpose of life all by relying upon this very circle. What's wrong, 37? The island. Our island has fallen ill. going on? Is that a hailstorm? No. I don't think so.
those are? Abraxas's. Falling from the sky. It's the storm. The storm of this era is here. Miss Verton, did you just say the emanation has happened? Just now? More precisely, its 24-hour countdown has begun. There's always a buffer period before the storm, during which the storm syndrome gradually spreads from the critical point across the globe. The symptoms are different every time, and we have yet to discern a pattern. With the help of Laplace Scientific Computing Center, the best we can do now is to send a 24-hour warning prior to the storm. Another minute has passed. Please remain seated, everyone. We are still in the middle of a vote. The emanation holds no influence on this island. The discussion must continue until a satisfactory conclusion is reached. No other subjects shall be brought up until then. Come here, 37. Can someone please bring her a blanket? Forty-two. Go with Sophia and check on those Abraxases. Ah, good news. Good news indeed. We are freed from the pain of choosing whom to blame, are we not? What? The emanation is coming. The tides of Numa will pour from above and wash away all trivialities. By then, human intruders and the international powers of this era, along with the turmoil they brought, will all be dissolved and poured into the ditches like gunk. And we will regain our shores and return to the study of essence and forms. No! 
Oh, it's different this time. The island has fallen ill. It's getting bloated, stagnant, and sluggish, drifting into the world of matters where ignorance reigns. Soon, the tides of Numa will wash over us, sweeping away the fragments of the phenomenal world. What did you say? In other words, we will all be taken by the emanation? This. This is unthinkable! Thirty-seven, you just woke up from a coma. You're not well. Why don't you take another rest? No! No time for that! I'm here to warn you. Apiron is gone. I can no longer sense it. This has never happened before. Why are you so surprised, 37? You should know the reason of its alienation. You brought outsiders to the sacred place. You betrayed the scripture's teachings, and angered a Puron. <gasps> of course, I may have jumped to this accusation, as Manus Vindicte also intruded our sacred place without permission. People, as of now, there's no proof that the emanation will influence the island. 37's account is lacking. And we are still plagued by suspicions, accusations, and the damage is done to our home. We are to proceed with the hearing and reach a final verdict on both the Foundation and Manus Vindicte. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I, I shouldn't have intruded the whole of truth, but... Sophia, weren't you and 42 checking on the Abraxases? What is the matter? The Abraxases don't look right. Their beaks, no, their entire heads are melting into oil paints. And 42, we were on the beach suddenly, he... <laughs> now I see! It finally all makes sense! There never was the truth, nor the transcendental! Everything is a lie, nothing but shadows on walls, flickers of fire and fragments of reality. No one will survive the oblivion. The island will be destroyed amid its conflict. <gasps> The Storm Syndrome. 42, your face! No one! 888, stop conversing with him. We must subdue him. Now.
battery checked. Time for treatment. We make an ideal team. Secured. I should excuse myself. He has the storm syndrome. Please listen, everyone. 37 is right. Something's changed on this island. Your immunity to the emanation has been weakened. never happened in the last eight times a feeble induction my friend just because you've never seen a purple cow doesn't mean it doesn't exist must we talk of logic now 42 has literally been emanated first the army then the emanation everything's been falling apart since the outsiders arrived on this island the foundation and Manus Vindicte. One of them must answer for this. Then you should also ask 37 and number zero what they've done in the sacred place to anger Aperon so much. Hi. No, 37 didn't cause this. I told you, it was Manus Vindicte. They broke the peace agreement and launched suicide attacks. They forced their way into the cave. You and them are equally responsible on this matter. They at least paid with their lives. What about you? You claim that 42's abnormality was caused by the emanation. But how are we to believe that it isn't, in fact, the work of your arcane skills? As we went through your belongings, Miss Verton, we found a golden sampling device. Enlighten us. What exactly is the Foundation looking for here? That's... <laughs> A 
Good, Vertin, good. Let the confrontations be louder, and the struggles be harder. I wonder what shall come of this. Silence! The debate will end now. Since we were unable to come to an agreement, further discussion is pointless. There are more pressing matters to attend to. This will be the end of the assembly, and my decision will be the final ruling. I demand that both parties leave this island at once. I respectfully accept your verdict. My choice matches that of Verton's. <gasps> but may I ask for one small doubt to be dispelled? Miss Verton and I will depart ere long. Do you truly not desirest aid from us? You're kind to ask, Miss. It is true that our circle has been disturbed, but we see it as a mere turbulence of the phenomenal world. He who holds the compass decides the circle. This will not shift the center of our focus nor change the shape of our beliefs. Medin Hagan. <sighs> he purged the Storm Syndrome with an arcane skill. I never thought it would be possible. The light of intelligence has cleansed 42 of confusion. It is also what the island needs. The incident will be properly handled, and my ruling stays unchanged. I expect your words to be matched by actions, Miss Arcana. Certainly. It was a fair and just decision. If only one could depart amidst such unfavorable weather. I presume Miss Verton will also appreciate more time to prepare for the journey. What sayest thou? The hourglass empties in two hours. Please leave before that. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration.
Lastly, I would like to share a story. To conclude today's meeting and respond to Miss Arcana's tale. I am most honored. I too have heard the story of the First Circle, but in my version, more followed. The First of Man were intimidated by the enormity of nature and constantly tried to defy and escape it. Our ancestors, however, had the opposite reaction. They found solace in nature, which welcomed them with a nourishing embrace, sharing its vastness and sublimity without reservation. It was the perfect harmony, the moment the circle ceased to represent confrontation and avoidance. As we bathed in Apollo's illumination and wandered the tranquil shores, our souls resonated, and we were lifted to a higher wisdom. This was how we conquered our fears, emerged from ignorance, and allowed ourselves to indulge on the essence and forms. This was the rise of the classic man, May you all be blessed with the courage for reconciliation, the determination for peace, and the devotion to nature, qualities no less noble than caution and defiance. You may all leave now. Please, just a moment. Our circle. Eight hundred and eighty eight was right. I have enraged a peron. I am responsible. I will go back to the sacred place, pass its test, and ask it to share the divine light of Gnosis so we can learn the truth about the essence. I will make up for what I've done. I promise. It has been 300 years since the last challenger had their success in the cave. 37, are you aware that we have other means to cleanse the island, even if you don't bring the matter to a Peron? Yes, I'm aware. Then are you aware of the price you will pay should you fail its test? Yes, I am. Then you shall have my blessing.
to meet you. I can hear it. I will remember oh, your sacrifice. Thunder attack. Charging. Loading. It is here. Faraday's miracle. Target confirmed. I admire I will remember your sacrifice. For you and for us. Keep up the pace. Attack. Cheer up. Charging. Loading. Charging. Eliminate target. Aim and shoot. The light that illuminates all. It is here. I, robot, child of science. Jack Fang. Oh. Don't worry. I will remember the sacrifice. For the good of all. Target confirmed. And now to return to my long term mission. The headquarters has issued a notice. The critical point of the storm is in Vienna. This type of storm syndrome involves a bodily transformation into oil paintings, primarily affecting the face, but sometimes spreading to the torso. It is often accompanied by delirium and an intense obsession with war. Like the storm of 1929, it was accelerated by social upheavals resulting from the constant tensions Manus Mendicte created between nations. This... era... This is absurd! We went through all that trouble, sweated our guts out, and finally got to a place where the storm can be kept out. But now you're telling me that immunity is going to disappear like a fart in the wind. <sighs> I was planning to stay here for a while. There might be alchemic materials and pieces of books the Abraxas has left behind from their mills. Oh, now 
that is frustrating, mate. <sighs> Such is the nature of Arcanum. The immunity hasn't disappeared. It's just waning. For now, only the beach has lost the effect. We are still safe around the Hall of Apiron. But there's no guarantee that we'll be safe here forever, right? <laughs> Reminds me of Zeno's survival test. Senato and I talked about this. We think the island is protected by a large-scale arcane ritual. The sudden decay of the island's storm immunity might be the result of its changes, though I'm unsure of the specifics. Those people are doing something about it, right? That leader with the rock star hair, shouldn't he be taking action by now? Six has gathered all integers after the assembly. They're going to perform a mass cleansing ceremony. 37 also mentioned a test. I think they have more than one way to deal with the changes. To the best of this apple's knowledge, secluded pure-blood arcanist groups often have rituals that they keep to themselves. These islanders impart truths based on intellect and rationality, yet their doctrines are highly religious. Perhaps their arcane skills are passed down in a religious manner. Oh, very mysterious, very arcane. I hope they're not all huddled together doing a mass at a time like this. And I'm more worried about us, Capitan. Arcana asked for more time for both sides to withdraw, didn't she? Yes. Six gave us two hours to leave. That is to say... We must set out when the storm countdown reaches 20 hundred. And before that, the stone bangle on your wrist still works, right? Yes, I can feel it. It would scold me whenever I thought about going to war with them. I see. So we only have two hours for the plan. Plan? What plan? Aren't we sneaking away from all this? Sorry, Regulus. Your... Mm, accommodation was a long way from ours, so we haven't given you the latest updates. To put it simply... Where are you going? Um... Uh... 37? We... We're discussing how to leave this place, 37. Precisely. I was just about to say, your chief wants us gone in a jiffy, but we don't even have a piece of wood to sail with. Vertin is sizing us up to see if we can fit in her suitcase. She's going to swim across the Aegean Sea using her tiny arms. Right, Vertin? Right. Hmm. Sounds like a lot of fun. Then you must leave from the north side of the beach. Jump off the cliff there and head south. The cliff is on the tangent line of the Hall of Aperon, which is a good sign for your journey. I will show you where to jump, but you'll have to wait till Verton and I return. Me? Where are we going? What kind of question is that? The only place worth going. You're the one and only Zero.
We'll go see a pair on together. Aren't you going to look for 37? You took such good care of her while she was in a coma. I don't know. I don't know what I should do, Madame Mata. She's going back to the cave for the test, where I can't help her. All I can do is pray for her, for I have no adequate knowledge or power to assist her. As ever. Perhaps you needn't worry so much. Thirty-seven is the one favoured by truth. She will be fine. I know. It's just... <sighs> She is also of mortal flesh. She could get hurt, bleed, or die. You haven't been with us for long, Madame Marta. The Peyron and its test might be new to you. Here on this island, we spent years theorizing, proving, and constructing models based on our mortal comprehension, defining the boundaries of what man is capable of understanding. But when it comes to the essence and forms, we are unable to make any definitive statements. So we humbly approach the temple and inquire about the correctness of our beliefs. And our answer is delivered as a yes or no, reverberating in the form of echoes. Is that the submission of proof Six mentioned before? Validating one's essence and soul with a number and verifying the authenticity of one's claims are simple feats for us. But a Peyron's test is different. Those who succeed will obtain the transcendental truth. Those who fail will pay a terrible price. <sighs> Everything has its limits and boundaries. Those who overstep their bounds will only court their own misfortune. We must respect and be wary of our limits, so our souls will be adequate for our bodies, and all things be refrained from excess. The boundless, limitless, and infinity are not of our realm to tread. They belong only to ancient beings that we cannot utter. We can only stand in awe, offering our admiration, humility, and reverence. Now 37 is going to knock on its door, and ask to be indulged with the transcendental truth. But, if she fails, if she can't bear the weight of the boundless infinity... I wish I knew a better way, or could even do it in her place. But only she can do it. It has to be her. 37. I'm sure this is the perfect solution to finally put an end to all our problems. If I pass the test, a Piron will grant me the answer to one question. It can be any question I don't have an answer to. Even about the essence and everything. At least that's what Mama told me.
I just have to choose the right question to ask. And we will be rid of all the troubles. Whether it be the emanation, the turmoil of the phenomenal world, or the dangers threatening the island. All will be gone. I have Six's blessing. He agrees with me. So, Ferton... Uh-uh. Not so fast. You can't just steal away our helmswoman like that. This thing? It's too good to be without any risks, don't you think? What if Vertin doesn't make it back, huh? Who's going to swim us across the sea then? Hmm? It could be risky, but not for Vertin, only for me. Zero multiplied by any number will still be zero. And we have validated that proof. Well, that's not good enough for this pirate. Besides, Vertin doesn't seem like a zero to me. It's okay, Regulus. I think I'll be safe there. But 37, isn't this a sacred test for your people? I've never taken the oath. I'm not one of you. That does not matter, Vertin. But you must know that once we enter the temple, we cannot turn back. The path to the truth is a one-way road. Our last visit was interrupted, remember? You didn't get to ask your question, and I didn't get my answer. And now, I don't need to ask my question anymore. You and your friends were right, Vertin. The discord in the phenomenal world does have an effect on essence and forms. No one can argue against this when facing the emanation. But there's more I'd like to know, and I believe you feel the same. I will tell Six that you're coming with me. I will tell everyone and persuade them, because this is the right thing to do. Go, Timekeeper. While you're out, Lilia and I will ready us for evacuation. We will liaise with the Foundation from here. Thank you both. I'm ready. Before we go, 37, I have a question. Hmm? You just said that Apiran will grant an answer to whoever passes the test. Will it answer my question? If I asked for a way to become immune to the storm 